Welcome to Breaking It All Down, I'm Count Zero. This past weekend was the 2014 Worldcon in London, which is Lundcon 3 was the name, and with it was the year's Hugo Awards. Alas, I did not get through all the nominated reading material as planned, but, well, at least rather before the awards were given out as planned, but still I managed to get through the books that caught my attention. The first was Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie, which I reviewed a few episodes ago. This time, I'm taking a look at Neptune's Brood by Charles Strauss. The first thing that bears mentioning about Neptune's Brood is that while it is the second book in a series, it's also a great jumping-on point of the series. The book, basically, doesn't really require any information that you absolutely need from the last book that isn't explained in this book. When it comes to books that are midpoints in series, or sort of second spots in series, um, and on, this can be something of a problem. The Honor Harrington series, for example, by David Weber, is a series that I enjoy, but it's a very serialized series. All the books build off each other like a chain, and if you miss a book in the series, even in some cases something that would be considered a side story, you can end up missing important information that is called back on later in later books. This book really doesn't have that problem. The book is set about three to four thousand years in Earth in the future, and it follows Kinra Alizond 117, a android accountant in a society that's basically mostly androids. Um, there are very few humans left, if at all, and he's, as we know, it is basically extinct. Um, and the story follows Al uh, Alizond, who is a android accountant, who is searching for one of her siblings after the sibling in question has gone missing. The two are co-signatories on a slow money transaction that's worth a lot of money, so it's entirely possible that the sibling has been kidnapped. However, Kinra's search will result in her running into doppelganger assassins, mutinous space monks, and piratical insurance underwriters. Yes, insurance underwriters. So, because of all these elements and stuff, that it, um, well, what slow money is, and the fact that our main character is an accountant... Um, on our pirate insurance underwriters, this book does kind of require you know something about how the economics of this future society works, which means this is a book that kind of requires some input items. Now, one of the problems with science fiction, or frankly space opera science fiction, is they can run into problems when it comes to the input dump. You basically say, okay, we have to stop the story cold to explain this information. There are ways to do this where this isn't a problem. Um... As a good example, Tom Clancy, who also frequently puts info dumps in his techno thriller novels, is often very good at finding a way to put in an info dump at a time where it's dramatically appropriate and make it kind of build tension. A uh, good example of this is in Red Storm Rising, Rising, a book I reviewed previously, where Clancy uses um, a info dump about how uh, it's the phalanx. Um, anti-missile system works, and basically uses the info dump about how the system works to get to the reveal about how our heroes are kind of, at least on this ship, are kind of screwed, because they're getting shot, because there are being more missiles shot at them than they have, than the Phalanx missile system has bullets to shoot them down with. Um, in this case, it's more a situation of dealing with economics. What is slow money? How does it work? Um, and why is slow money used at all, for example? Uh, additionally, the book's plot hinges on basically the galaxy's biggest confidence scam and trying to find out who's responsible for it. And so if you've learned anything about various, from various thrillers in the past, like, for example, uh, All the President's Men, which is kind of a based on a true story thriller, but it's it, it, not just based on a true story, it's a kind of docudrama-ish thriller, but it's still a thriller. Um, you know to follow the money. And when the thing that's being scammed isn't so much a, just one person or a group of people, but a galactic economy, you need to know how that economy works. So when we get an expedition of what slow money and fast money are, what's the differences and why you'd use what when, 
we get the information when it's relevant, and because those pieces are building to the greater mystery of what was the scam, who did it, and how did they do it. And all this works together really well. It's kind of thing where, if I told you, without going into all this previous explanation, that this is a book about space accountants, you'd probably say, okay, this is there's nothing of interest for me here. Which would be a mistake. Because there's lots of interest here. Um, it's a really brilliantly well-written book, from the space opera elements to, again, managing to make accounting interesting. That's interesting, but riveting. Now, I've read Strauss's work before, with his laundry series of bureaucratic espionage horror novels, and I enjoyed that series immensely. Similarly, I had a blast with Neptune's Brood as well. The plot is very quick, with lots of interesting twists and turns as the book's narrative made, it way, made its way to its final conclusion. As for which one I'd prefer as my pick for the Hugo Award winner for Best Novel, Neptune's Brood or Ancillary Justice, it's a tough decision. But I like Ancillary Justice a little more. It's the first novel that tells an incredibly engrossing, engrossing story with interesting ideas behind it, and which doesn't feel like a first novel. There is none of those sort of tentative steps of, I want to do something interesting or daring, but I'm new at this, so I'm not going to try it, or I'll not commit to doing it. Which I like. Now that said, I'm not saying you shouldn't pick up Neptune's Brood. It's a book that really merited that Hugo Award nomination. Um, I definitely recommend that you check it out. Now, for the record, I can't tell you which one of these books won, or if a completely different book entirely won at the Hugo Awards, because I'm recording this well before the actual Hugo Awards ceremonies happen. So, I'll get into the winners and stuff possibly later. Until uh, next time, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to know when my next video comes out. Additionally, please feel free to su to support my Patreon. There's a link there and a link below in the show notes. And that will have information on how you can support. And if you want to request a book or movie or something for me to review, you can do that as one of the pledge options. Also, your support will help me improve my production quality, get better cameras and that sort of thing, and generally help me get these out a little more often. So, thank, so once again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.